Okay, um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome to today's career tutorial, which is um, going to be a very interesting topic. So maybe just to give a brief introduction of why um, feedback or effective giving and receiving effective feedback is key in for project managers. Um, so if you look at especially the new managers, uh, there are a number of problems that they face when growing. Uh, so this could be figuring out um, maybe how to fulfill the company's vision. It could be, and all of these problems could range from very broad, complex to uh, very difficult decisions to make. So um, another thing could be, how do I, so the questions they would ask themselves is, how do I fulfill the company's vision? How do I bring this project to life? How do I retain this certain clientele? How do I um, lead a very productive team? Um, so those are some of the questions um, that you'll start getting when you start managing people. And now the focus shifts from leading yourself to guiding others as well. So that also means that you're going to start handling really tough conversations um, with your team. And the key to this is just mastering how you communicate effectively to ensure to your teams, to ensure that you don't create any kind of friction, to ensure that you build enough trust uh, between your team members and make sure that you just deliver the work that is actually needed without, um, yeah, without friction. So this could involve um, things like giving feedback um, that's needed to grow, um, giving feedback with a very positive intent with the goal of just ensuring that we are trying to grow this company or solve the conflicts that have risen up um, well. And the other thing is to also build trust. So um, this is something I read from a certain blog uh, that the major problem that we have is new leaders tend to procrastinate having um, difficult decisions or just having the very difficult con conversations. And this may uh, affect the team's progress and it mentioned that the root for this uh, was on lack of experience and practice and this can all be gained by make, making an intention and also time and experience so that's basically the whole reason as to why we're trying to uh, have this topic today so on today's topic, we're going to look at um, understanding first the different types of feedback that exists, the different communication styles that everyone has, everyone has a different one. And then also how do you plan and how do you plan to give effective feedbacks? Uh, so the thought process that comes uh, when giving out feedback and also actually the act of uh, giving effective feedback. Uh, we're also going to look at if you're on the receiving end of um, a critique, how do you take that feedback again with a positive intent? And how do I consider if like this is an effective feedback and I need to change on this? And we're also going to look at uh, a path feedback model, which is one of the frameworks that you can use um, to effectively give and receive feedback. Um, so as managers, I think the first thing we need to start, uh, like I mentioned earlier, when you start managing different people, the focus shifts from leading yourself to leading and guiding others. So maybe it's just a show of hands or a reaction. Do you guys sometimes give yourself feedback? Just in thumbs up, thumbs down. And what kind of feedback do you give yourself? It could be at work. Um, 
Um, if maybe I could quote one of the memes that were sent from the CBS channel when you want to quit and then you remember you need this, so you tell yourself, okay, you have to get back to work, I think. Such is kind of giving feedback to yourself. Um, but if no one wants to share, we can go ahead and talk about the different communications styles in our workplace. So everyone has different personalities, uh, character traits, and it's important in our workplace that we encourage, uh, we, we're able to accommodate uh, all the different personalities and also tune ourselves into like, how do I communicate better with this person or this other person? So with that, it's important for us to understand the different types of communicators that we have. So the first one is a passive communicator. This is someone who doesn't really speak up too much. They're just happy to go with the flow of others. And yeah, they support the need for others. So they barely, they barely share their interests or what they think about something. And then we have the aggressive communicators. These are people who can sometimes come out as overly confident, especially when they're giving out their ideas. And so the point, uh, yeah, to the point, sometimes they kind of overshadow what you're speaking. Um, so when you're speaking, they kind of shut you and then they continue speaking. Um, so one of the character traits for an aggressive communicator is they may feel unsupported in a way that um, they feel like others do not really get their point of view. And a way to help a certain communicator is to ensure that you have clearly defined the roles and responsibilities of each and every person. So if you know this is your department and this other person has um, Yeah, so if you know this is your department and this person has, um, yeah, sorry. Uh, so yeah, if you know that this is your department and the other person wants to come and um, take over the conversation or roles, it's important for them to understand um, the roles and um, yeah, the responsibilities of each and every person so that they can also accommodate everyone's ideas. And then we have a mix of a passive and aggressive communicator. So they don't normally feel comfortable saying what they mean. They tend to um, doubt themselves, even if the idea is good. Um, so it's important that you make time for community building because um, when they feel well accommodated in a group, they can start openly sharing what they need to. And then we also have the assertive communicator, and this is very ideal. It's just an ideal characteristics of communicators in our place. Um, is someone speaking? Okay. Uh, yeah, so an assertive communicator knows how to stand up for their ideas. They know how to communicate and advocate for what they want. So if it's a physical meeting or a virtual, they could use hand gestures and they always maintain a, a positive impression or expression. And they also try to share how they feel in a productive way. And they also have like high self-esteem. So you're very confident in yourself and your ideas and you, um yeah you're able to kind of influence the others so yeah that's those are the different types of oh tony shared he has had an aggressive communicating supervisor would you mind just sharing more information about um if you'd like to share more, how how was that? How did that affect you as um, working under him? And yeah, how did that make you feel, Tony? 
So uh, thank you. Um, I've had this experience with uh, my past. Uh, so she, uh, it was a she, um, a young lady. Um, so uh, whenever, whenever there there was some, you know, uh, situation or like a problem or something that would that need to be addressed, and then uh, I came up to make some suggestion. By the time I decide to speak, she would be like, "No, no, no, Tony, no, no." Uh, we have to do it this way. I'm like, so there were things that she was doing wrongly, but then how do I get her to do it the right way, which I know shouldn't be the way that she decided to do them. A uh, couple of heard, I couldn't get my opinion heard. And so I just allowed her to be the supervisor, do what she had to do. And there were a couple of mistakes made along the way until some of my, my, my colleagues, you know, um, noticed her behavior and they were like, why girl don't allow you to, you know, speak on some issue, on some situation that you, that you know you have edge on, you know, you have better knowledge on. I said, maybe she just being a lady and she, she's kind of maybe afraid I'm going to take her position or, uh, you know, when people see, say, oh, your, 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 your honor man is kind of, you know, maybe smarter or has a lot of good ideas. Some people don't 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 look at it that way. But I always wanted to convey my ideas to her so she would present it to our boss. You know, then our team will have that kind of you know, um, I mean, good contribution to the organization. So it, it been it, it was really it was really bad. In fact, the head of the organization had a very serious setback. Institution was held back due to financial crisis. So there were like trouble, you know, trouble, trouble storming, you know, uh, trying to see where the problem is coming from, which department is, you know, responsible or could do more. And then they found out that our department was the one that had the issue. Because we were deferring payments to, to another, when they ask me, you know, can you solve this problem for us? We have this situation. What could be your recommendation? And then I lay a few points out. I get two recommendations, and then we effective immediate. Uh, 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 you know, the the the, the, the president just said, uh, "Let's do this." He called a couple of meetings, like three or four different meetings, the same day, and then there were a whole lot of change made. But then I fell off with my supervisor. That's the bad part about it. Um, thanks, thanks, Tony, for sharing. I think it's important for us to discuss our experiences in the workplace. And from that, Tony has shared how an aggressive communicator or a supervisor can kill the motivation within the team. So yeah, thanks for sharing. And I think uh, we're going to uh, we're going to also talk about how to effectively give feedback, like you asked. Uh, yeah, thanks for sharing. So, um, so let's go back to understanding feedback. So, feedback is generally just uh, a response to something. So, it could be given to people. It could be given to a process. So. Um, how operations are done. It could be maybe a different product or service. And in a workplace, it could be between employees, managers, and even different stakeholders. So it gives evaluation. It could also give uh, insights and regarding maybe performance and also workplace dynamics. So understanding feedback is a good tool to improve the team's performance and also your own individual perform performance. So uh, there are different types of feedback. So the positive ones to maybe give you extra motivation, the negative um, that maybe is sometimes considered or referred to as um, good criticism. So it points out areas that you feel could be improved or changed in a certain process or in someone. And some uh, another type of feedback could be offering a suggestion 
and um, evaluation is something to just assess how did how was this performed and also a reaction and a request this is basically just um, how do you express just how you express how you feel about someone and also request um, sort of feedback yeah um, so it's good to understand the different types of feedback. So when you're trying to give feedback, it's important to know where does this fall and how exactly to frame it. Um, so I think we've also talked about this. So in a workplace, feedback can come in the form of um, giving an evaluation of something that you've done. So maybe you're given a project and your manager gives you a uh, tells you how exactly you have done on a certain thing. It could be improving processes. Um, it could also be an open communication, which is basically just teams discussing how to best build something or um, how to best go about a certain thing. And it could also be a motivation, which is very good to improve um, the employees or the team's um, stamina and also problem solving also a 360 degree feedback is where uh, feedback doesn't just come from the top to the employee so from the manager to the employee instead it could be all rounded so it could also be from the employee to the manager trying to give them feedback of how they are good managers and i think that also comes uh, it also comes with different uh, company cultures. So you'd find some cultures, even during some companies during interview, you're always asked, um, uh, what's your management style or how exactly would you like to be managed so you can be, so you can improve, uh, so you can bring your best self to work. Um, it's a, a culture I've seen in some companies, which I think would be nice if it's uh, well adopted and then there's also the feedback between the customer and the stakeholder we're going to have a look at all of this in detail so like we mentioned earlier we're going to look at a uh, path technique which is basically just one of the frameworks to help you when um, giving feedback so it stands for performance analysis feedback and it's mostly very valuable for managers or um, so it's it's something to guide you. Uh, so remember the goal of the feedback is to ensure that even if um, an employee has not really, uh, even if an employee has not uh, done the work really well, you still need to show appreciation to the colleague just for the time and efforts that they took. And you also need to avoid uh, hurting their feelings because that's going to reduce their motivation. So you're, you're trying to give feedback, even though negative, but also trying to ensure that you're still managing that relationship well. And you're also trying to build a trust for that employee to your manager. Um, and so yeah, PATH is one of the really good technique. So the first thing is to appreciate the performance that they have done. So whether negative or positive, try to find something good that they have at least tried because you're trying to show, okay, thank you for trying. You've put in your time, effort or energy to do this. Um, find something positive from what they've done and also add it to uh, your, add it to how you're going to um give feedback so here's a link that just takes you to a blog about um the path technique but the first step is to analyze the performance find something positive and try to praise the individual remember we're all humans and um in terms of psychology having uh giving someone praise or effort uh kind of improves their mood and the second a uh, thing to do after acknowledging the performance is analyze the situation um, in detail. So 
this was the work that was supposed to be done. It was supposed to be done this way. Where exactly in this um, in this person's work have they not achieved or fulfilled? And then highlight those specific issues that need addressing. And then um, now that's the analysis bit. And then when giving feedback, it needs to be very uh, it needs to be very constructive. So this is where you now give feedback and you should be confident in how you give. And then you try and use feedback, uh, try to be very precise in your communication. So when giving out feedback, it could be something like, um, so this are just some different things. So when giving feedback, so you've already appreciated the work that done, you've done an analysis of what needs to be done. When giving feedback, it's important to know how to articulate or frame um, how you give feedback to this person. Because remember, a human's brains have this natural um, uh, tendency to just overthink things. So try to um, try to yeah try to phrase your way in. Try to be very precise in how you phrase your wording. So it could be maybe using the start stop continue it's just a small structure you could say something that i would start uh that i would like you to start doing is this so maybe your team member has been coming in late for work every time so uh say something like something i would like you to start doing is or maybe if it's something that you don't want to see continuing it's i would like you to stop this um, and also try to encourage action and keep the idea that uh, when you're giving feedback, it's a gift to the other person. So you're trying to help them grow. So I don't know if you guys have experienced this, but once you've done some work and then you're given feedback about it and you go work on this uh, feedback, you find that, oh, my project has actually improved as opposed to what I did. So it's also a way of you um, helping or guiding your other employees to also improve. And then there's also a feed forward uh, structure. So instead of dwelling on past mistakes, so as a manager, this all comes back to holding on to your uh, temper and your feelings. And also, instead of just dwelling on the mistake that has been done, you need to start forward thinking and thinking about um, how exactly do I uh, improve on this, or what can I do? What what can we do differently next time? So thinking about um, what needs to be done instead of dwelling in the past mistakes, and then also one on ones, which are very key. There is always a difference between um, sending a, an email or just a message to even a video call or even a physical meetup. So. Uh, they all they always they always have different impacts and so you try to also have a one-on-one -on -one with your with your team and try to create a safe space for them and encourage open dialogue and just ensure that the goal for this is to ensure that you all grow as a team so that's on building also strong uh, strong teams so another thing is on how to handle constructive feedback at work so this is now on the receiving end so if you you've already mastered how to give feedback to someone so if i'm on the receiving end how do, exactly do i um, handle constructive feedback so this is um i think it's mostly just a mindset that you need to develop at work so it's very difficult because this is um you're given maybe not a good um you're not given a good uh feedback about the work that you feel like you did your best so um this could also be it could it could be very hard because again we're humans and we have feelings so but it's very necessary for an employee to try and take this thing as a positive thing and just cultivate a positive mindset with accepting feedback so this could be things like understanding learning how to listen exactly to where you're told to improve and also try to understand it and apply the suggestions 
Um, so when handling uh, criticism, this still comes with the mindset that you need to have when um, when handling critique. So this could be things like controlling your reaction. Yes, a negative feedback will make you have um, will will tend to negate your emotions, if I may say. Um, but you need to train how to control your reaction. Um, also, try not to take it personally because understand that this is not about you. It's about the work that needs to be delivered, and then try to process your criti criticism that you've been given, see if actually um, this suggestion works better or your suggestion works better. So try to process it and also be open um, to, yeah, be open and professional to the thoughts that you give yourself. I'll also give yourself some grace, um, understand that everyone makes mistakes and uh, yeah, also try to show appreciation that this person actually got the guts to tell you on where to improve because remember that it's for your own growth it's for your own uh, learning also don't dwell too much on criticism because this might also affect your uh, motivation and mood and yeah uh, also try to apologize so um apologies for not um yeah, for not actually um, reaching to the goals that were desired. Um, so this is just another other tips on how to improve your uh, just on the mindset, how you feel, how to feel about criticism. So the best thing is to think the best of the critiques. So be very positive about it. Be self-aware. Um, in terms of understanding, okay, I made a mistake here as well, and trying to not be ego egotistic. Um, understand that you can also make mistakes and also uh, try to also process or receive the feedback that you've been given. Um, try to be also a very keen listener and also respect negative criticism, even if it makes you feel bad, and also learn from the feedback that you've been given. So the last bit of our tutorial, I'm going to open just uh, two scenarios, which I hope we will try to engage in. Uh, just a small practice on maybe how to effectively um, perform or receive, give or receive feedback. So we have the first scenario where your team member, you have a team member called Sarah and has been with the company for a year, has shown really great potential, but recently the performance started um, declining. Um, so how would you effectively give feedback? This Remember, this is team uh, from a team member to a team member. How would you give Sarah uh, feedback? Anyone wants to? try using the path technique maybe so uh, appreciate the efforts that she's done so she's been at the company for one year try to actually express that and maybe appreciate her work and then um yeah anyone wants to go Yes, okay, thank you. Uh, uh, from my side, just as a feedback uh, provider or as a person who supervises her or observe her uh, uh, work and task, first I will uh, just arrange a separate session with her. We will uh, make a joint plan to to, to make the, that separate session and uh, during that session uh, i will just give her the strong uh, part or the contribution that she has made so far which is very important as an appreciation i will provide with her with these two or three strong points and then uh, I will uh, ask her uh, if she can 
tell me the drawbacks or the uh, the things that make her to decline and then i will ask her if she uh, has given the the opportunity or the chance to do the same task again what area she is going to improve and then after having this uh, uh, response from her together with my uh, appreciation and together with my uh, strong sides then we will still plan uh, a joint plan for the next uh, observation or for the next time or after some uh, time interval we will meet again and the area she is going to improve on that then we will make that joint plan and then we will have a copy of that plan together and then i will follow up remotely and she will also follow by uh, uh, referring the plan that it is already on her ha on her hand that is the plan that we have uh, planned together so by doing this uh, i will follow up her work and we will see the improvement in the next observation thank you Um, thanks, Sheriff. I think that's a really great way to go about it. Um, let's listen to Casa. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, almost uh, Tarafa has said some. Uh, just to add something, maybe uh, in the beginning, she she have been uh, performed in good position or in good situation, whereas recently she. Uh, uh, she become uh, some uh, poor performance or she shows some performance. So in order to solve such kind of uh, uh, problems or challenges, first uh, identification of the problem or the gap should be uh, the gap should be done. Uh, maybe cooperation with her or uh, sh maybe she can even identify the gaps by herself. Uh, as a manager, I can support her or I can push her to identify her problem, whether it is personal problem or personal challenges or whether the project challenges. Maybe sometimes when uh, some performance uh, gap is happen, it can be from different directions. One, from the performance of the person, uh, the other from the uh, challenges of the project itself. So uh, we should identify where is the problem, where it, this challenge is. Second, uh, we have to put action points. It means that uh, we have to put, uh, after we identify these gaps, already we have identified these gaps. Uh, so therefore, we will put the action point according to the uh, gap that we have identified. identified. So, and we also put the action plan uh, for that uh, especially for the uh, performance that shows uh, poor or gaps. And uh, the third one will be implementing that things based on the action point or based on the action plan that we have put, we will implement that one. Uh, not only herself, we have to, because we are working as a team leader. Since we are working as a team leader, we have to work on that gaps including all all supporting team of that project this is uh, the idea or the uh, opinion that i have thank you um thanks casa those are some really great points um if maybe to highlight you mentioned something on um understanding exactly why her feedback has changed and also setting good action plans. Great. Uh, let's listen to Tony. Hey, uh, thank you. Uh, so like like previously, I always have had, you know, um, I like to I like to base on experience. So um, if this was in my in my case, um, knowing the fact that an individual has had a great potential at start and then uh, unfortunately somewhere down the road you start to experience some changes in performance it has to be due to some some issue and and in order to to help this individual out like i normally would do um on the work on the work side 
I always run up to one or two of my individuals that I know that they always have some issue. Like for instance, I had a lady who, who um, she has some problems, right? She had problems, you know, you know, coping with her boss. Had problem with the work also. Sometimes they give her some tax, and then um, she goes online. She having difficulty to process it to send meals and stuff like that. So what I would do, I would tell her, "What you do? Come to me. Let me help you to send it." But afterwards, you come and let me show you how to do it. So, so we do that a couple of times, right? You have to show the person how to improve. You got to show them physically. Some people learn by practical. You know, the more practical things are, they learn easily than to just give them all the theory that you want to, but it will be hard. So also, uh, one of the things, one of the things that I have experienced is that, you know, people have domestic issues that, they, that, that, that disturb them, that distract them, and then they go place and then they get all day thinking about that, those, those issues from home, uh, domestic affairs, they come to work with it. So we have to always have that capacity building team, that workshop that will help every individual learn how to, you know, handle problems, domestic issues, and work issues. So uh, if you have work challenges, you have to be able to go to one of your colleagues who you know has edge or have a better knowledge to be able to share. So we as individuals who have these knowledges, we, we share, we help, you know, get their work done and show them the way to do it. So it's always good to, to to show a person how to, and also it's on the organization itself to help uh, um, its, its uh, member or, or staff to be able or be in a position to handle these kind of issues. Thank you. um that's great i think what we've also learned from that is um understanding that sometimes um work can be affected by uh, some personal issues as well and it's important as managers to um to understand that as well um so tevin has also left something on the chat so performance appreciate her and recognize the potential analyze uh, tells her if they've noticed a decline uh -huh. uh, yeah those are great ideas thank you all for participating so let's go back to uh this week's exercise which will basically be a scenario of uh, how to handle our effective feedback or how to deliver good feedback in our, in our workplace. So as project managers, I think one thing we'll notice is managing people is sometimes always hard. And sometimes it's not during the first, um, the first um, communication bit or the first delivery that um, this case will get solved. It's going to need more and more conversations. So sort of negotiations in between so um yeah so this week's exercise will be on just a little background of the company and what you do and then you have a project and you have certain milestones that need to be achieved before uh, before delivery and uh, you have some team concerns that you also need to look at. So as a manager, you need to understand exactly your goals and the team's concerns. And you're going to be tested on how exactly would you give feedback. So also understanding the different places where you'd give feedback. Um, so for example, an email would should which should be an email would be very official as opposed to a Slack channel. It could be just different how you phrase it. Um, yeah, so as always, just responses or an PPT. Um, yeah, let me know if you have any questions in the meantime about anything career, non-technical, section related, or about this topic.
Any concerns? Any questions? Anything unclear? Okay, I'll take that as everything is okay. Thank you so much for being here and let's all have an amazing Maybe, evening. Uh, sorry, yes. can you share yes. with us these two documents so that we can refer on that and we will okay. start the task. So I think it's good to share with us. Okay. Um, yeah. now, sure. If you share the link now on the comment section, we can access it. Okay. I think you will also find it on Slack all week five, um, if in case this one gets lost again. Okay, have an amazing evening, everyone. Bye, and thanks for being here.